I was so curious to hear how I would be described because I'm, I'm described as many things, but uh, more and more it's turning into comedians. So I guess that's the, the path I'm going to take. I just want to ask you, how many people here are living the life that they planned, exactly as they planned? <laughs> exactly as they planned, yeah. It's kind of what I thought. <laughs> It's great to have goals and dreams. They keep us on track and they give us something to work towards. But we never know exactly how our life is going to turn out. And that's okay. I mean, that's like knowing the end of a book before you, you know, instead of experiencing it page by page. I never intended to be a, a comedian. I dreamed about being a comedian, but when I dreamed about it, I sort of thought I'd be in New York or London or Chicago. I daydreamed, you know. Uh, I never thought I'd be a comedian in Zurich, Switzerland, you know, <laughs> the center of banking and insurance. So that's, but I used to stand in front of the mirror when I was about 20, and I would just stand there, and I would like, practice with my hairbrush that I was this comedian, and I was trying out these jokes. And, and then I told my mom this, and she said, well, female comedians aren't very feminine. Guys don't like that. So, yeah. So that's why I'm wearing a feminine enhanced... <laughs> costume today. Okay. So we can be feminine and strong. So when I was asked to do the entertainment tonight, this afternoon, I was thrilled. And I thought, well, what kind of comedian am I? What, what kind of comedy should I do? People often ask me if I'm a stand-up comedian. And I'm, I'm not a stand-up comedian in the sense that I stand here with a handheld microphone and I pace the stage and I talk about men and women and the relationships and I'm not that kind of comedian. I'm also not the kind of self-deprecating comedian who stands here and talks about her love life <laughs> and how guys just suck. <laughs> Do you guys have that problem? <laughs> really? I'm not that either. Nor am I the angry feminist! I'm not an angry feminist. I don't hate men. Get out. Get out. It's all your fault. And it's your fault and your fault and your fault. No, I'm not that. Not that kind of feminist either. No, I'm a character comedian. I call myself a character comedian. I have an acting background. And I do, I have over 50 characters in my bag. I actually counted once. That's how sad I am. I sat down, I counted each character. Some of them are celebrity impersonations, some are original characters that I've just made up, and there are tons more, hopefully, that are yet to be discovered, and I'm discovering them every day. I discover them by observing people or just by having a conversation, something that inspires me, or just trying them out right here. So that's what kind of comedy I do. So when I was asked to do this entertainment, I thought, what, what characters should I do? Who could I do that would be related somehow to a TED Talk? And I thought, well, I could do a politician. For example, I could do somebody like Bill Clinton. And I could say, um, I would like to respond to the recent TED Talk given by that woman, <laughs> Miss Lewinsky. And I'd like to point out that she was wearing navy blue in that talk. I'd like to think that was a shout out to me. <laughs> Man, those were good times. <laughs> Check it out on YouTube. And I thought, or I could be an entertainer like Julie Andrews and say, the hills are alive with the sound of Ted talks. <laughs> and I could spend the next 18 minutes as Julie Andrews giving a Ted talk on how to have a living nanny without having it ruin your marriage. <laughs> Especially when the father of the house is a handsome sea captain <laughs> with a very large estate. <laughs> or I could be a scientist, like Dr. Ruth Westheimer, the sex therapist from Austria, talking about momentum. It's like having an orgasm. <laughs> because you build and build and build and it gets faster and faster and faster until you reach the highest altitude possible. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> you sail for a while, you cruise around, you 
your turn, maybe? You're swimming around, you don't know. There's turbulence, you don't know what's happening. And then you have to land. That's right. And for everyone, landing is different, right? Every landing is different. Some people cry. Some people want to have a cigarette. Some people get the munchies. Some people say, don't touch me, I want to sleep. Some people say, who are you? Everybody is different. So I'm not gonna do that. So then I thought, what does momentum mean to me as a performer? And I have a background in improvisation comedy. Now, improvisation is instant theater based on audience suggestions. And that's all about momentum. It's about letting go. In fact, I, I teach workshops called Let Go and Let Improv because it is letting go. You, you go with it. You go with the flow. You trust. You build. You move forward. You say yes. You accept. All the things that I've heard today in the talks. It's a very, it's a very positive thing, improv. And if you think about it, you know, trust is so important. We've heard a lot of aviation references today. And any time you step on a plane, yes, even the sexual ones, um, any time you step on a plane, you have to trust. You have to trust the airline, you trust the mechanic, the pilot, mm, um, <laughs> the weather, aerodynamics, a higher power. You have to trust something or you'd never leave the house. So what do you do? You just go with the flow. So today, I'm going to put that into practice. I'm going to go with the flow. And I'm going to deliver a TED Talk that is completely unprepared, <laughs> unplanned, and it's going to be based on your suggestions. So I'm going to do a TED Talk as the person you choose and on the topic you choose. All right. And does it, well, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I'm also going to call it the worst TED Talk ever, <laughs> just, just to make that clear. Now, I, I need your help, obviously, for suggestions, so I'd like to warm you up vocally, because you haven't been shouting much. You've been laughing and going, hmm, but I haven't heard anybody calling out names, like, imposter, I don't agree. You know? So that's what I want you to do for this, for this improv game. So I'm going to play a very simple game with you called Word Ball. Usually you play this in a circle with a group of people, but because I'm a lonely individual, I have to play it by myself against a wall, and I just have to, or in, in front of a mirror. But I'm going to use you, and I'm going to use you as one voice, okay? So I'm going to just throw a word at you, and you're just going to throw a word back at me. Now, we could get 170 words. I'm kind of curious to see how this works, because I've never done this before. <laughs> I'm just going to throw back whatever word I hear, whatever association I make, all right? So let's try a few words. And don't be nervous, because nobody will know that you've said a stupid thing, okay? Okay, so, tree. Fisherman. Swim. Wow, I heard doghouse and... <laughs> all right, um, shoe. Socks. Pantyhose. Okay, let's go faster, okay? Let's just blurt it out, blurt it out. Camera. Foot. Hen. Chicken. Rooster. Cat. Okay, you're getting better, you're getting better. You're getting warmed up. You feel warmed up? You feel warmed up? Okay. All right. So, what kind of person would you like to see me give this TED Talk as? Like, throw out some famous people, maybe Hillary Clinton? Morgan Freeman, <laughs> Lily Tomlin. Oh, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> okay, I, I think the, the top two I heard, who? Pope Francis. <laughs> okay, it's impossible to choose one, so you're gonna have to choose. So on the count of three, I would like you to yell out who, of all the things you heard, who would you like to hear? One, two, three. I, th I, th I think I heard Madonna. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, and the topic? What would Madonna never talk about? Dogs, Dogs virgins, <laughs> plastic. Would she never talk about that? What would, be, what would she be the least uh, expert in? 
<laughs> wow, I warmed you up too well. <laughs> I think I heard rocket science. <laughs> All right. Now, Madonna talking about rocket science. Now, for this talk, um, I, I've been watching a lot of, of TED Talks and, and studying people, obviously, today, too. And hand gestures are very important in, in TED Talks. So um, I've been studying that. There are like three basic hand gestures that I've seen that I've decided to name. One of them is the um, this. <laughs> I call this the church. <laughs> it's like, here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the door and look at the people. This is the church. <laughs> then there's the, um, the politician. This was Bill Clinton you saw earlier. This is Hillary Clinton, by the way. <laughs> All right. And uh, the third one is the clicker. That's the person who's very attached to their clicker, and they, they use it. All right. OK, so now you think you're off easy, but I actually need some help in this, in this talk, because I need somebody to be my hands. You know, the, you know the helping hands game that you play as a kid? You stand behind someone, and you do the hands? So it would be great for me, since I have so much else to do, <sighs> um, <laughs> if you guys would be uh, my hands. So who would like to come on stage and be my? I see a hand go up. Come up here, please. <laughs> and your name is? Desiree. Desiree. Thank you, Desiree. All right. So, are you good with your hands? Are you, are you Italian? I played the piano when I was young. I should have asked for an Italian. Oh, that's great. Okay. Now, you just have to stand behind me here. All right. All right. Maybe a little bit further. That's my mic pack, by the way. It's not. Um, I'm not wearing anything funny. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Life is a mystery. <laughs> Everyone must stand alone. <laughs> I hear you call my name. <laughs> and it feels like It feels like <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> this is a picture of a rocket. <laughs> Rockets are a very masculine symbol. And as a strong woman, obviously, I don't have a penis. <laughs> Which, obviously, rockets are shaped after. But I do have rather nice breasts. And I know many famous fashion designers, like Jean-Paul Gaultier, who design special rocket bras for me. They're very, <laughs> they're very long and pointed. <laughs> and they have a lot of uplift. So I'm not going to pretend that I know a lot about rocket science, but I do know a few really hot rocket scientists <laughs> that I've slept with. <laughs> to, I'm just saying. So if you ever find yourself at a TED Talk, on something that you have no idea what to talk about or have nothing to say, my advice to you is just touch yourself 
because it totally distracts your audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that was totally unplanned. <laughs>